y'all. I have a great video for you today. I'm going to be talking about my favorite book references. I get a lot of requests for information about what references I used, particularly when I was new, and I have so many that I thought it would be overwhelming. So I'm going to break this down into a couple of videos. In this one, I'm just going to talk to you about the book references that I used early on and that I still use to this day. So there are going to be five must-haves and two nice-to-haves. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner. I make content for nurses, NPs, and students. Welcome to the channel. Okay, I'm just gonna dive right in because I want this to be a quick reference for you. Um, this is gonna sound self-serving, but uh, there's a reason I'm introducing these books to you in this order. The first book is the one that I wrote. It's called The Ultimate H&P Cheat Sheet. It looks like this. It is um, 12 of the most common ICU problems with assessment and template plans. Okay. Here's the reason why I tell you this one first. The other books I'm gonna tell you about are heavy anatomy and physiology, management of ICU patients. This book is the one that's the guideline for how to write that note. And I completely underestimated how long it would take me in the beginning to write notes. So whether you're a student or whether you're a new grad, understanding the process of how to compile information is gonna make the difference on how thorough you are and how productive you are. So I didn't, realize the power of using smart phrases until about four months into my onboarding. And it was like the light bulb went off and I started finally going home on time. So I really encourage this book for people who are novices. Um, it is essentially what it is, is a copy of my dot phrases. So the 12 most common problems. So for example, acute respiratory failure, I've included the dot phrase or smart phrase. And if y'all don't know what that is, it's a body of text that you save into your medical system's EMR. And then you recall that information very quickly by typing in dot acute renal failure or, or whatever it is. And it just pulls that information over that you've already written. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you encounter acute renal failure. And I really love it for the speed. Um, you can have templates where you just change out certain information. So I change the creatinine to match whatever my patients is that day. I also love it because you can recall information about problems that you don't commonly see. So if someone comes in with a Tylenol overdose, you can have a body of text that you created in advance that tells you exactly what tests you need to get and exactly what treatment you need to deliver. And you can put as much or as little as you want in there. So some of mine are very detailed and includes references that I've pulled the information from. So studies that were used, things like that. And it's just reminders to me. So it made me much more efficient from that standpoint. I highly recommend it for anybody who's new or even if you're a student um, and you wanna go in and start strong by impressing your preceptors with your quality notes must have. You can get it on my website, brienp.com. I have an e-version and I have a hard copy. Um, and the books. So in order of importance, this is a must have. The ICU book by Paul Marino. Y'all, this is, okay, I have three copies of this book. It's great when you're new. Um, it's good to have a like physical copy of these things because while you can have all of these electronic resources, you can have apps, um, you can have programs in your hospital's EMR that you can look at. Up to date is a very common one. Sometimes it's hard to weed through the information. If you look up AFib RVR on up to date, you're going to find like 20 different things that you can. So you've got to scroll down and figure out where the treatment is. And anyways, it's just not as quick. So when you're busy in the ICU, I love this when you're new, like mine, I, you can read it cover to cover, first of all, which I did start doing while I was waiting on my credentialing to go through. I read this cover to cover and I tabbed the pages that I thought would be helpful to me, which was important. Okay, that's an important tip. Um, when you get a call about something like AFib RVR, which you will on a daily basis, and you can't remember what the dose of metoprolol is or whether or not you should use cardiazem, um, what your management strategy should be, you just quickly go to that tab and you can do it in 2.3 seconds. Here are the top three things I need to do when the, with the acute management of AFib, decrease the rate, cardiovert, thromboplax. It, it just walks you through exactly what you need to do and then there's a very easy to read table over here with different drug options, what the pros and cons are. So you can just consume this information very quickly even while you're on the phone with the nurse and give them orders. So I love, 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 love this book. For all of these books, I'm gonna include links below. Um, if you need to purchase them on Amazon, 
I would greatly appreciate it if you would use those links because I get a small commission if you do. It doesn't cost you anything at all. So I would greatly appreciate that and that helps support this channel. So the that second book is kind of a 2A and 2B. The Ventilator Book by Will Owens. The regular one and the advanced one. Um, this, you can read this sucker in like in two hours maybe. I mean, with highlights and tabs and notes. Um, it, it, this is a fabulous clinical guideline. This is, you take it to the bedside. This is, you get an admission from the ER and the patient's already intubated. They already set up initial settings. What do I do now? How do I turn the knobs? What do I change on this ventilator to suit the needs of this patient? This book tells you how to do it in very easy to read, huge text. So this is not even a lot of, this is not even a lot of words to consume y'all. It's great. Um, then the advanced ventilator book goes into a little, uh, it's just more advanced physiology, more advanced theories, different management, um, talks a little bit more about ARDS, different principles. So uh, it is helpful. It is helpful. If you need a little bit more about ventilators, this is one of my favorite books. Um, Essentials of Mechanical Ventilation by Hess and Kakmerick. Love, love, love this book. Okay, this book, who is this book for? This book is for the ICU provider. Um, if you're not gonna be working in the ICU, I don't know that you're gonna get much out of this. This book is a deeper dive into the physiology behind the neuro and pulmonary drive of the patient, as well as the mechanics of the ventilator and how you can match those two. It goes really deeply into the graphics on the ventilator and how to interpret those waveforms, which nobody really looks at. Um, and those are super, super, super important. Do not underestimate those waveforms and what they can tell you about what your patient needs and what the ventilator may or may not be giving to them. So it helps you to break down the different types of asynchrony and whether or not this is a trigger problem, a cycle problem, whether or not this is a flow problem and give the patient exactly what they need so that the answer is not just to give more sedation when the nurse calls, give them what they need. This book, helps you get there. It's a little bit complicated in parts, but I, it, it's definitely a doable book. It's the most um, easy to understand ventilator, advanced ventilator book that I've ever read. So I love this one, I recommend it. Um, and then here's my two little extras. So if you are going into a CCU or if you just need to brush up on your EKG recognition skills, this book is great. This by Dubin, this is the oldest book in the world. I don't even know when it was written. I've had it since I was a brand new RN 20, 20, over 20 years ago. It has a funky smell to it. It still smells 20 years later to this day. It's weird. And the paper's shiny. Okay, that's not really important. <laughs> but clearly I'm all about the presentation here. Um, but it's important because look, look at these graphics. Great visualizations. And this is the kind of book that, I don't know if you can tell or not, but there are blanks. So this is a workbook, basically. You go through and you fill in the blank. Um, so it forces you to kind of be more engaged with it. Some of it, like it gets so far into cardiology that I'm like, eh, I don't know if I really need all this. Um, but it's it's a good resource to have. Um, and then the last one I want to tell you about is, I'm going to, okay, this is Felsen's, I'm going to try here, Principles of Chest Rentgenology. Rentgenology. I don't know. Tell me how to say it, people. I don't know how to say it. Anyways, x-ray. Interpretation of x-ray. This is the best book when it comes to interpretation of x-ray. It gives you, it's also a workbook, gives you pictures and you have to fill in the blanks. Um, I did not use it as much as I thought I was gonna use it, but I do think it's very good if you want that extra layer of support, you're super nervous about starting and you're gonna have to interpret chest x-rays. This is really, really good for it. Um, if you're in pulmonology, ICU, very good to have. Only thing is, and this is my only caveat to this book, is that this. Um, interpreting chest x-rays is very right-brained. So to me, the best way to learn x-rays is to literally just look at them every single day and talk to your attending every single day. Here's what I see, what do you see? And just learn from them. But it only takes about a month. It takes you about a month of looking at x-rays every single day and you'll, you'll have it down pat. Um, it's a good to have, but it's not a must have. So that concludes the must have and nice to have books that I think are essential. All those other things you can just throw away. That little pocket guide to the ICU, I don't know anybody who actually uses that thing. Let me know, leave me a comment if you do like that book and you've used it. I bought it, I don't think I opened it twice. Um, it fits nicely in the pocket, but it's just not very practical. So these are the ones that you need to have. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna talk about podcasts. Welcome to the ICU.